Okay, yeah, this chapter was crazy. I thought this would be a lot cleaner of a robbery, but I guess not everything goes as planned. I can't believe last chapter I didn't say anything about this cat. Whenever they showed us a few more extra panels of this cat, I was just certain that it was up to something. Rohan, even in a different universe, is still serializing his hit manga series, Pink Dark Boy, and I'm getting the craziest feeling that rock humans are gonna make a return. And I know for sure that this stray cat and Rohan combo is gonna be a difficult one to get out of. We begin right where we left off last time, Jodeo, our bold and cautious heroes walking into the backyard right past Rohan while he's swimming. Like I've never seen a pool like this in real life, one of those ones where you're just like perpetually swimming forward. I don't really swim, but it just seems kind of boring. Jodeo's taking cover and kind of just fumbling around for Rohan's iPad. Jodeo sees some like a half drawn pictures, which is the most shocking part to me because Rohan was still hitting deadlines while like Made in Heaven was activated. <laughs> Rohan's also drawing digitally now, so I guess that's pretty cool. I wonder if once Rohan finds out that Jodeo Jodeo's peaked at his manga if they're gonna be in trouble, just like the first time that we ran into Rohan. But I think if that was the case, I think Heaven's Door would've just activated immediately. So Dragona Stan gets us through the first locks of the house, and the other guys are just standing guard, Paco and Usagi. And it doesn't take us too long to make it in, Smooth Operators just gets in and out and does his job. And now, what's the first thing we do? Drag says we only need the diamond, and not to steal anything we don't need to. So he looks over and sees Usagi and Paco just filling their pockets to the brim. <laughs> for some reason, Usagi thinks that the safe for the diamond would be hidden behind this wallpaper that has this sketch on the wall, so he just snips it down, like some safe's actually gonna be behind it. And then we make it into Rohan's little office space, or his little workstation, and this is where it starts to get really weird. There's test tubes everywhere, and there's chunks of cooled lava literally scattered everywhere in the room, like some madman. But why would Rohan have all this stuff? They assume that maybe he's got all these rocks and all these pictures of lava just for inspiration for the manga. Usagi knows a little bit about these flasks and that they're used to heat or cool substances, which is concerning because he probably isn't using these for any of the right reasons because he's on drugs. <laughs> but I'm so curious on why these cool pieces of lava have any significance at all, but I really think this has something to do with rock people. Trying to find something more to go off of, I'm just looking at the wiki for rock humans, just for some more reasons why this would be the case, so I'm just gonna paraphrase some of what's on the wiki here. So it says, rock humans are silicone based organisms, unlike humans which are carbon based, and I just looked up silicone, and yeah, this shit looks like volcanic rocks. But then I looked up volcanic silicon because I don't know where the fuck silicon comes from, and this is what it says. So I found that volcanic silica does exist. The molecule formed from silicon and oxygen is the basic building block of volcanic rocks and the most important factor of controlling the fluidity of magma. So yes, silicon is literally the building block for volcanic rocks. And rock people, like the exact same. So. Even going further up on the wiki, um, it says that rock humans can hibernate for 25 years and they can live up in temperatures as high as 950 degrees Celsius and as low as negative 240 degrees Celsius. So, I mean, I'm from America. I use the freedom metric system. But, I mean, you know, with my dumb brain, this still seems pretty fucking hot. And then just to go along with that, it says magma can be between 700 degrees Celsius and 1300 degrees Celsius. So I thought that was going to confirm it just a little harder for me, but no, like it seems like we're a bit out of range. But maybe he has all of these rocks because uh, maybe some of these are just burnt out, like maybe their lives are just burnt out and some of them still have some life in them because they weren't as hot. But who knows, I'm just going off of all of this based off of what I've seen so far. But yeah, I will die on this hill right now that rock humans exist in this this is it right here. This is them being introduced to us in part 9, for sure. Jodeo is still sitting outside behind Rohan's chair, and he's just scrolling through Rohan's iPad's camera roll, and then he sees a puppy, and since the dog ain't here, he assumes that he left it with his editor for his manga. I mean, that's probably what a Rocky does, but yeah. Anyways, the cat is still here, and there's no way that it's Rohan's, because why wouldn't he just left it with his editor, you know? But the cat makes its way inside somehow, and now that's what the cause for concern is, because Rohan's coming in, and because he has no idea what this cat's doing here, Jodeo says over the mic, that we should just give up for now and try again later, but he doesn't realize that we're in a manga and things just don't work out like that. Rohan steps inside just knowing that something is up, and I think just for a distraction, Jodeo makes it rain just a bit over Rohan's iPad and his journal and stuff. It does buy him some time because Rohan walks back out for just a second, but then it puts him even more on edge because I think he knows that something is up, and I'm pretty sure at this point he's definitely aware that it's some sort of stand attack. And then while he's out there, when he picks up his stuff,
stuff, Rohan's finger gets pricked by a cactus. I'm not exactly sure how this happened, but I think Jodeo um, meant to have him poked, just to buy a little bit more time. But yeah, we have our gang inside, and we just found a safe behind a bookshelf, so uh, GG Jodeo, we really ain't going back now. So the cat passes us by inside the house, and we're all just confused as how this thing got inside. But it doesn't take long for us to get the diamond in our hands. Smooth operators can just bypass any lock without any problem, it seems. And oddly enough, inside the safe is another rock. So yeah, if these things didn't seem important, well yeah, now you know they are. <laughs> After the cat walks past our boys, it starts to get weird for real. Jodeo is still outside waiting and watching, Rohan just walked in, and the rest of us now have our hands on the diamond. We put it in Paco's bag and we start to walk out, and then around Paco's ankle just comes a wire. It's not connected to anything and it just starts tying itself together. But then Drag also gets hit by the wire, and then Usagi dodges it, so he's the only one, him and Jody are the only guys not being strangled right now by this rope or whatever. And there's no way this is Rohan's ability right now, but this also isn't Rohan's cat, so this random cat is just trying to stop us, I guess? So it ends with Rohan just really on edge because all of his stuff outside was targeted. He has a cactus thorn in his finger, and some random stray cat is now in his home. I mean, at least Rohan can think that the cat is what destroys his wallpaper once he goes in. <laughs> but yeah, Rohan definitely knows this is a stand attack at this point, and next chapter we're gonna see just how he goes about this 1 versus 4 versus cat situation. <laughs> yeah, I really hope this rock human, rock organism thing turns out to be what I'm thinking. I have no clue what's up with this cat. I really just want to know what it's doing here. Usagi is already showing that he's a bit smarter than what you'd expect, and I'm excited to see everyone stand in like a real actual combat situation. Yeah, because up until this point, we've just fought in a bunch of cops and standless humans. <laughs> but yeah, that's about it for the chapter. I'll be here in a month for the next one, and until then, I'll still be dropping random anime manga stuff. I'm speedrunning, recording, and editing this video just to get it out as timely as I can, so I hope it's still enjoyable. Come catch me live sometime. I was playing Pokemon the other day, and it was a lot more fun than I thought it would have been. Leave a like, subscribe for more, see you next time, have a great day.